today on Be Something Wonderful. Detach from the old you and occupy your new reality. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had a session with a new client yesterday, and he said, Tom, I, I've, I've been watching your videos on persisting and, and this I, idea of playing whack-a-mole with, the, with the, your negative thoughts and, and fear, but it just seems to me every time I move in to my new reality, every time I occupy that new identity, that I am playing whack-a-mole again with my old thoughts, with fear. How do, I, I, it, it feels like I'm always in, back in my old reality struggling to, to move back to my wish fulfilled or my new identity. So we talked about that, guys, yesterday, and I want to talk about this with you today and more. So here's what I talked to him about, that, that remember, this is the game of life. So as long as we're in the 3D world of duality, we're playing the game. So once you know, it's like if you're playing whack-a-mole, and you don't, you know, whack-a-mole is where you hit the mole <laughs> as the mole pops up and another one pops up again. Well, if you know it's a game, then it's not irritating. It's not frustrating. It's, it's not a crisis. You know it's a game. You know another mole <laughs> is going to pop up so you whack it. Whack-a-mole. That's the whole idea of 3D duality. Once you know it's a game, once you know that because of the nature of 3D reality, because we're only perceiving less than 0.1% of all that is, then fear exists. Fear is there. Doubt's there. Limitation is there. It's all there. It's all there to play the game of whack-a-mole. In other words, to, to, to know it's a game and go within and occupy the reality that you want while having fun playing the game. This is what Scripture says about it. This is what Paul said in Scripture. I die dearly. What was Paul saying there? I die to that old me dearly. I die to the fear. I die to the doubt. I die to the limitations. Right? I die to the unwanted conditions on a daily basis because you're, because you're, you're playing whack-a-mole. They're always going to come up, right? Be open to the miracles every day, right? That's what really Paul's saying here. It's being open to that 99.9% or more of unseen reality where everything you want is, right? And, and that, that less than 1.1% is the mole popping its head up. Just whack the mole, right? Have fun playing a game. A Course in Miracles says, hold on to nothing, right? It's about dying to your old assumptions dying to your limiting beliefs, dying to your doubts, dying to your fears, dying to those attachments. That's what detaching really means. It's to detach from the desiring and the wanting things to be different. Hear this. <laughs> That's what detachment really means. It's to detach from the desiring and wanting things to be different, for that 0.1% to be different. Instead, go within where it is different. Do you hear this? This is the power. Give up the old reality and old version of yourself. Not by resisting it, not by trying to get rid of it, but by accepting it as a quantum possibility out of an infinite number and then choosing again. Whack the mole and then choose again, right? It's, it's not, it's give up the old reality, old version of yourself, but not, by, but not by resisting it, not by trying to get rid of it, but by accepting it as one quantum possibility out of an infinite number and choosing again. Remember, detaching is just detaching from the limitations, detaching from the fear that's popping up, detaching from that game of whack-a-mole, thinking that it's serious. It's just a game. It's detaching from all that seriousness that you're taking it, all that wanting and longing and craving things to be different, right? Wow, that's powerful. You can't let go of something you don't have. So when you're resisting it, right, when you're going, I don't want to play, the, this, is, this is irritating, this mole, get, another mole keeps popping up, these limitations, when you try to get rid of them, when you try to get, now you're saying that, you, that they don't exist, you can't get rid of what you don't have. So you've got you've to say, okay, I get it, I accept that as one quantum possibility, 
right? I, I accept that, but I don't agree with it anymore. I, I call forth a new one. Now you can let it go, right? Now you don't have to hold on to it. But when you're resisting it, when you're, when you're running away from it, then it sticks to you. Then you can't let it go, right? When you try to suppress it or repress it or deny it through denial, I'm going to talk about the difference between to deny and denial, right? If you're, if you're in this sense of denial that, oh, the fear doesn't exist, the, the, the doubt doesn't exist, the limitation doesn't exist, but you really do believe they exist, you're just in a state of denial or repression or suppression, then you can't let it go, right? Because you can't let go of what you don't have. You've got to accept it in, right? Accept the possibility and let it dissolve in, infinite, in the field of infinite possibilities, right? To deny is not denial, right? It's, not, it's, it's, it's about no longer giving power. Hear this. This is what to deny means. When, when Neville Goddard talks about it, when Jesus talks about it in Scripture, right? We're going to talk when the ancients talk about it that Jesus said in Scripture. It's about no longer giving power to the old reality or the old version of yourself. It's about withdrawing your light, withdrawing your awareness, withdrawing your attention from it. Remember, what you give time, space, and attention to create, becomes reality. You're withdrawing from that. You're not denying it. To, to, to den, you're, not, you're not in a state of denial. You're denying it. You're denying it by no longer giving it power to the old reality, by no longer giving power to that old version of yourself. You're withdrawing your light. That's the difference to, to deny and denial. Right? And this is what scripture says. If anyone wishes to come after me, this is Jesus, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Wow! Jesus says it right here. He must deny himself. What is he saying? He must give no power to that lower state of consciousness, to the doubt, the fear, the limitation, the disbelief. No power to that old version. No power. It's not denial. It's to deny it. Give no power. It's not to suppress it or repress it. It's to, it's to deny it, to give no power to it. I die daily. That's what Paul meant, right? And remember, take up the cross. What is the cross? Cross is something that, what was Jesus saying there? Remember, the cross represents those doubts and those limitations, but it also represents you rising in consciousness. It, it, it represents both, but what does it really represent? That something must die before you can live or occupy a new reality. That's what carrying that cross means. It means you, you are now going to die to that old you, die to that old reality. That's big. Something must die before you can live and occupy your new reality. What must die? Your old beliefs, your old fears, your old doubts, all of those things, right? That's powerful. So, and remember, the cross, here's the cross. The vertical part of the cross, that represents your upward movement, your rising in consciousness, to be one with your wish fulfilled, to be one with your I am awareness in Christ consciousness. That represents that more than 99.9% .9 of unseen potential, your divinity. The cross here, the cross over the cross, right? That's the vertical. The horizontal represents your resistance, your attachments to 3D conditions, your desires, your lack, your limitation, your fear. It represents that 0.1% of 3D reality. That's what it means when you're carrying the cross, right? It's not that I have a cross. People use it in 3D reality. I have a great cross to bear, like it's a burden, like it's suffering. The, the idea is to let go of the suffering, let go of the old you, let go of the limitations, rise in consciousness, let go of that resistance, the conditions and the fear, right? It's a metaphysical death, right? Dying to self, dying to your old identity. It's a total surrender to your new reality and new identity. That's what the cross represents death but it represents the metaphysical death of the old you. It represents the metaphysical death of those fears, of that doubt, of those limitations, of that sense of lack, right? You, you lose what's possible, 99.9% .9 by holding on to the 0.1%. Stop holding on to it, right? Let it go, die dearly, like Paul said. Otherwise, you lose, that, that, you lose the, the potential that you could be by holding on to what is or what you think you are. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But wh whoever loses his life for my sake, 
He is the one who will save it. This is Luke 9, 24. Jesus, again, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Meaning if you want to hold on to that 0.1% of limitation, of lack, feeling that you're safe in that reality, thinking that that identity is the only one you know, then you're, get, then you're going to lose it anyway. Right? You're going to lose it anyway. Why? Because you're never going to access that potential that you, who you truly are. Right? You're, you're dying a physical death. Right? You're, that, that real death is holding on to that 0.1% and all that lack and all that limitation and le leading a mediocre life, leading a, a life where you think you can't be, do, or have whatever your heart desires. That's the real death. Right? The metaphysical death of dying to that, all of that lack and limitation is a rising conscious. That's your resurrection right, to everything you're going to be. That's big. So let's continue with this. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? We hear this a lot. It's always used in a different way in 3D reality to specifically talk about material things and cars and houses and boats, but that's not really the message here. The whole world is at less than 0.1% of 3D perceived reality. What is a man profit if he gains the whole world? If you've gained all of that 0.1%, all that doubt, where all that doubt and limitation exists, and you're believing in that, you're believing that is your life, you're believing that is reality, you're believing that it is insurmountable, that you can't rise in consciousness, that you can't create from that 99.9%, then you, you feel like you've gained the whole world, even, even if you're going after, say, material things. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you think that's what it's about, if that's the only thing, and that you've got to hold on to it, you've got to hang on to that stuff, you've got to, you've got to find your happiness in the outside versus the inside. You've got to find your fulfillment in that 0.1% versus the 99.9% .9 of unseen reality who you really are. That's what that means. Your fulfillment is not out there, right? So even if you profit, you gain the whole world, that whole 0.1%, as you try to be fulfilled, as you try to be happy, you've lost it all, right? You've lost who you really are. You've lost that high, I am awareness, that higher being, right? Holding on, that, holding on to that, you lose the potential of more than 99.9% .9 of what's possible. That, so that's the cross you carry, right? Dying dearly to your personal consciousness or your, per, or, or your s small self and affirming and rising in consciousness to, the, to your higher self. That's the cross, that's the cross you carry, right? To die dearly. To die dearly to what? To your personal consciousness, to your small self, to your small fears, your small doubts. All fears are small, guys. They're all small, right? Fears are small, insignificant, not real, right? We create them. You want to rise in consciousness. Man, he must die to that which he is before he can become that which he desires to be. Neville got it, right? He must die to that which he is... He is before he can become that which he desires to be. Neville says it right here. Let's continue this. So Judas, the 12th disciple, represents your current state of being. Hear this. In your current state of being in your unwanted state or the state that you don't want to be. Right? That's what that represents. You have a glimpse through your desires, what you desire to be, but you haven't moved to that desire, right? That the higher version of yourself, you still try to influence and manipulate 3D reality to realize it, right? But remember, Judas was the treasurer of all the riches. Remember, he was the treasurer, but he was also a thief. In other words, you hold on to all the potential, but as you, don't, as you don't rise in consciousness, as you don't experience this, if you don't die to the old you, you can't realize that. You, that you're also the thief of what you could be. The, the belief in lack, limitation, fear. That's the thief that steals you or robs you of everything that you want to be, right? You try to selfishly acquire what you want, right, through 3D. When I say selfishly, I'm not talking selfish in the way we most of the time we think of it. I'm, think, I'm saying you try to acquire it through a 3D means, through trying to manipulate 3D reality versus going within and imagining it, right? Sense consciousness, 3D conditions, they betray you. Who, who do they betray? Your higher self, your I am, who you really are. That's what Judas represented. He represented that, that you and your present conditions, your unwanted conditions, that sense consciousness that betrays your I am or your higher self. 
We talked about Judas representing betraying Jesus. It's not that Judas is evil. It's not that your sense consciousness is evil. It's not that your, your lower self or your lower state of consciousness is evil. It's just that you, it's just that it's not the truth or the full picture or the full perception of reality. That's all we're talking about here. You willingly give up your former state or sense of identity to become who you desire to be. That's detachment. That's what Judas also represented. Right? Remember, he was said to have taken his life by suicide. Right? You willingly give up your former life. You take your life by suicide or that state of sense or that old identity to become who you desire to be. That's detachment. That's huge. Let's continue this. So, Judas is said to have died by suicide. Your old state falls away naturally on its own accord. That's what scripture was getting at. It falls away naturally on its own accord. Judas, Judas <laughs> took his own life by suicide. As you assume and occupy your new identity, as you occupy and imagine your wish fulfilled, as you assume your desired end, as you don't get lost in, this, in the 3D temporary feelings of, and thoughts and, and old assumptions and old beliefs about reality, you rise in consciousness, right? You die to the old you and you rise in consciousness to the new. You are resurrected into your state of wish fulfilled, right? He willingly gives up his life, present concept, identity, old reality, this is Judas, by detaching from that which he is conscious of being and assuming the consciousness of that which he desires to be. Neville got it. Hear it again, perfect. He willingly gives up his life, Judas, right? Present concept, identity, old reality, by detaching from that which he is conscious of being and assuming the consciousness of that which he desires to be. It falls away naturally unless you resist it. Wow, unless you keep the old you alive. Wow, that's big. Judas, your present state or sense consciousness is not evil. I know one of you mentioned this on, uh, in scripture. You were looking more at a typical interpretation of Jesus as this idea of evil. It's not evil just represents you not, not remembering, not recognizing who you really are. And you're always forgiven. That's what Jesus meant by continual forgiveness of sin. There is no evil. There is no sin. You're continually forgiven as you identify with your I am awareness, as you identify with that Christ within you, right? Jesus knew his being, I am, would be betrayed. Remember, Jesus didn't do anything. Jesus didn't act out. Jesus knew that it was Judas. Come on, he's the king of kings. He, he's God. He knows everything. It's not like he didn't know. He didn't do anything. He, did. he, he believed in the goodness in Judas. There was an inherent goodness in that 3D you. In you is the goodness, is everything. He, he believed in Judas to be transformed and to rise in love, right? So Jesus offered no resistance. That's what we're talking about. That, that old you will fall away. Judas died to the old Judas and resurrected into the, that represents resurrecting into that new state of consciousness, I am this, right? It will happen naturally unless you resist it. That's why Jesus is the example of offering no resistance. He knew, but he offered no resistance. He knew it would just fall away and that you would rise in consciousness. This is what we're talking about, guys. It happens naturally, right? Detachment from your old identity or reality is a natural and automatic, is natural and automatic. It takes you, it, it takes its own life. Hear this. Detachment from your own reality, your old reality, the old you, your old identity is natural and automatic. It takes its own life. It takes its own life. It dies. It falls away as you assume, imagine, and claim your identity with your new reality. That's why I'm always talking about putting your focus and intention on your desired end because that old reality dies. It fades. The, the, the image fades, the image dissolves within that awareness, right? Unless you resist it, that 0.1% of 3D conditions, unless you resist it, right? It will detach, it will fall away automatically. It will take its own life unless you resist it. Remember, Jesus didn't resist. Jesus knew Judas was the betrayer, but he did not resist. He did not call him out. He knew, right? So unless you resist, and this is what it said here in scripture, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again. In other words, unless you don't resist, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Or in other words, perceive the kingdom of God. Or in other words, perceive more than the 99.1% of the unseen reality. How cool is that, right? By detaching from the old, you create space for your new reality. 
remember, nature abhors a vacuum, right? So by detaching from that old, by letting that old you die, you create space for new reality. The old reality, Judas, is evidence of who you were, not who you are now. So as, you, as those moles, as you're playing whack-a-mole, remember, it's a game and they'll pop up, but they're all evidence of who you were, not who you are now, right? Judas is a representative of who you were, not who you are now. Resist nothing. Hold on to nothing. That's how to detach from the old you and occupy your new reality. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors, where you can share guidance and insights with others and ideas and success stories. It's a totally open group and it's at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. You can also follow us and join us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, or just visit our website anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. That's where all our information is. Creators, until next time, with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, see you soon.